I believe I won the last fight, uh, but you know, uh, judges saw a different fight. But like uh, overall, you know, <laughs> I learned that you, you don't leave it to the, in the hands of the judges. So that's what I'm going for. All right, so are you predicting a knockout for us on the 26th of September? I mean, uh, if it comes to it, and if I can get it out, why not? We love those kinds of fights. Now, I've got to ask, obviously, you have had a taste of having a world championship belt. You've had a taste of having a title like that. When it comes around a second time, when you have that opportunity in front of you to go for a title again, does it feel not as exciting? Does it feel more exciting? I mean, for someone like me, I'm never going to know what that feels like. So for you, what's that mentality like right now? And, and how are you feeling inside knowing the opportunity that could await the other side of a victory? Oh, uh, well, my mentality, uh, you know, it's just, uh, I'm just one uh, step away from it, from a world title shot. So I, I feel like uh, I'm back again in Atlantic City, you know, when I fought uh, Adam Lopez for the title eliminator. So this fight's uh, even more motivation for me because I know I'm a step away from uh, the world title shot. And speaking of the fans, obviously we're all happy to have boxing back. We're taking those right precautions to make sure that everybody's doing this safely. But what do you want to say to them? Because they're going to be watching from home. And honestly, this is something that boxing fans, we've missed boxing. We're happy to see it back. And of course, you know, to see a, a title eliminator like this, this is a huge one for fans. So what do you want to say to them? Yeah, to, to all my fans and uh, the people that's going to tune in, you know, keep an eye on me. <laughs> we, we might end this thing with the show with uh, Payano. So it's, it's going to be a war, you know. He's giving his best. I'm giving my best. And uh, we're going to try to make it uh, the fight of the night like we have done uh, with this previous fight as well. Perfect. Well, Danny, thank you so much for the time. I know that you've got the rest of your day ahead of you. So what's on the agenda? Is there still more training left for today? Maybe some more interviews? What do you got going on? Uh, well, i got to talk to my trainer, see, see what, what's coming up. But uh, overall, uh, we've been training since the morning. We did the running. Uh, we just finished working out. And uh, we'll, we'll see what the trainer got planned for me. All right. Sounds good. Well, we'll probably be checking in with you a little bit closer to that fight date. Again, that's going to be on September 26th. Danny Ramon, thank you for the time today, and we will talk to you again soon. Thank you, Jessica. Have a good one. All right. I am realizing that Zoom calls, it's a love-hate relationship there because I'm watching it and my first thought was, I got to clean my room. Anyways, if you want to check out the fight with Danny Roman, that is going to be on September 26th. It's going to be a Showtime pay-per-view against his opponent, Juan Carlos Bayano. Like we said, a WBC title eliminator. That is one that you do not want to miss. Both those guys were on a call earlier that day before our Zoom interview, and it sounds like it is going to be a great fight. Again, that is September 26th on Showtime pay-per-view. Now, coming up, we are waiting for the co-main event. It is scheduled to go six rounds. We've got George Acosta and Esteban Munoz getting ready for that one. But before we get to that, let's go ahead and take a look at interviews that we did with them. Not on Zoom. We did this before the weigh-ins. Check this out. Well, the weight hasn't really been a problem. I was already kind of like down. I was already cutting, actually. And so when they told me about it, it was like five days notice. I, I didn't really think about it twice. I just took the fight. Uh, George Acosta, I, I've seen him fight a little bit. I, I don't really know much, but I know that I can I can pretty much take him. That's why I, I, I agreed to this fight, uh, five days notice, no problem. Uh, not to be cocky or arrogant, but I do expect a, a knockout. So uh, I've been praying, I've been in the gym for a long time. I've been training for, since my last fight, so since March. It was difficult in the beginning, getting sparring because of the whole pandemic ever since it started. But uh, the last couple of weeks was really dialed in and there was a lot more fighters open to sparring. So I was able to prepare well for this fight. Yeah, so I went through a couple of opponents leading up to this fight. Um, I was preparing for a lighter weight as well, 133, 134, 137, 38, 144 was the final opponent. Um, so the main difference is the weight. Uh, as far as my sparring goes, I had a different 
uh, so many different kinds of sparring. You know, I had boxers, I had uh, pressure fighters. So uh, no matter what this opponent brings, I'm ready and I'm prepared for this fight. So I have many people that show up to my fights and uh, this is completely different now. Uh, under, the circ under the circumstances, they can't show up, but they still will f show support watching the live stream. Um, so I'm still grateful for them. Um, and I'm happy that they'll be able to watch my fight still. Even though they won't be there in person, they'll be there in spirit and watching behind the screen. Entering the ring, fighting out of the red corner, Esteban Stone Hands Munoz. Esteban Munoz, 2 0. Oh. San Bernardino, California. Stone Hands, the nickname, trained with Henry Ramirez. Doug didn't start boxing until he was 18 years old. Right, and I think he has right around 30 amateur bouts. Um, yep. So not a lot of amateur experience as well as a late start. But he has that enthusiasm that Henry really likes about him. Henry's not going to work with just anybody. That's true. So you got to be something about him. So here he is, Esteban Munoz making his Thompson boxing debut. It was actually a last-minute replacement. Found out on Monday. That he had a fight, so let's go. His opponent, across the ring in the blue corner, George El Yuyu Acosta. El Yuyu Acosta, rocking Los Mochi jersey in Los Mochi Sinaloa, where his family is from. Nine and one, his only loss coming to a highly touted prospect in Ruben Ace Torres. That was actually here last year. Right, that was a Corona fight. That was a Corona fight outside. Yeah. Um, has, he's 91, trains in Whittier, California. He got some great sparring uh, with Manny Robles at, in his gym in Southgate and Norwalk. So he's been around. He knows what's up. He's a uh, fan favorite. But tonight, no fans. So no fans. There is no UU cheering section that we're so used to. Lupe Contreras, I don't know how Lupe's doing it, but he is smooth, isn't he? Doesn't sweat at all. We continue with the action here at the Omega Products International Event Center. It is 3-2-1 Boxing, being presented to you by Thompson Boxing Promotions. This next bout, set for a distance of six rounds or less in the junior welterweight division. Our sponsors for this bout are Belgard, Semex, Equipment Depot, Natural Stone Resource, Orco Block, and Prenovos Normandy Daw and Rocha. At ringside, our judges scoring this bout are Ron Stevens, Raul Caiz Jr., Jose Cobian, and at the sound of the bell, the man in charge of the ring, referee Angel Mendez. Presenting first, the fighter standing in the red corner. He enters wearing red with white trim. When he stepped on the scale, he weighed in at an official 143 and three quarter pounds. And he enters the ring an undefeated professional with two victories. Both of those victories coming by way of KO. Fighting out of San Bernardino, California. Esteban Stonehands Munoz. His opposition in the blue corner. Wearing blue with the colors of the USA and Mexico. He weighed in at an official 140 and one half pounds. And his 11th bout as a pro with nine victories, one lone defeat with one of his victories coming by way of KO. Representing South Whittier, California, El Yuyu, George Acosta. Gentlemen, you were given the instructions at the dressing room. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Gloves on the waistline are good. Watch your head. Do not go. Touch him up. Angel Mendes, the third man in the ring. Let's look at the tail of the tape for this co-feature, Doug Fisher. And these, this is the welterweight division, um, but both guys are really junior welterweights. They just both came a little bit over the 140-pound limit. Acosta's a younger man uh, by two years at age 23. He's got the an ex extremely uh, longer reach, um, and he's two inches in height over Munoz. And we are ready to go. Six rounds for you. Bethel Durant, Doug Fisher, Jessica Rosales. We're here at the Omega Products International, the number one stucco company in the United States. 3-2 Unboxing brought to you by Thompson Building Materials. This one brought to you by the one 
in Lamita. So we see all the comments that you have on Facebook. And for those of you wondering, why do we take so long between fights? Protocol, we have to clean the ring. Everything has to get cleaned according to the California State Athletic Commission. So that's why we have such a break between the fights. Uh, so that's why you saw the interview with Danny Roman and the interview with Diego Costa and uh, Esteban Munoz. Great job by Jessica Rosales. And I'm just being told now that we are live on YouTube. So uh, Joe Pahar able to get it fixed for you. Also, thanks to Fino Boxing, Supreme Boxing, True Boxing Heads for your support on this show. Co feature, be a good one. Acosta, Doug, we've seen him on the Thompson shows. Now, 10 fights in. I've always thought if he would just step it up a little bit. Right. And he's doing that here in the opening round. This is um, aggressive for him. This is a fast start for Acosta. He usually waits for um, his opponent to come to him. Um, and he, he's, he's always got that height and reach advantage over most of his opponents, and he knows how to use it. Esteban Munoz, 2 0, two KOs, nicknamed Stone Hands, given to him by his trainer Henry Ramirez, that he has hard hands. And right now he's learning that George Acosta sitting down on his punches. Acosta in the blue with the Mexico flag on the side of his trunks. I see Munoz blinking a lot. Yeah. I wonder if uh, a, one of those nice straight jabs from Acosta got him in the nose, causing the eyes to water up a little bit. The left eye of Munoz. And Henry Ramirez tells me he does that all the time. Oh, does he? Okay. Some fighters, yeah, it's like a, it's just like a nervous tick or he whatever. He just blinks. Hey, yeah. Thanks for listening to the broadcast, Henry. We appreciate you. Way to focus on your fighter. As Henry is sitting right next to us. Pandemic hey, quarters. Henry's a veteran. He can multitask. Yeah, yeah, he can. You know, if you, you might not have known, but he trained Chris Ariola before. <laughs> I think I've heard of that guy. Yeah. If you're watching for the first time, it's a very casual broadcast. We interact with you, the fans on Facebook. Uh, see the comments. I know Albert Baker is checking in with us under the hand wraps lore. Hey, Beto, I, you know, his nickname is Stone Hands. It's not just a nickname. I no. can hear it. When his punches land, there is a much louder thud than the impact from Acosta's punches. Acosta, during this pandemic, started his YouTube page, El UU YouTube. Over a thousand subscribers now. Good for him. What does you you mean? It's a nickname given to his family. Oh, okay. Because they couldn't say his name. Somebody young. Okay. So El Yu Yu. Uh, that was just the nickname given to him. It's one of those non-boxing nicknames that stick with it, the fighter. It's no. Nope, it's one of those Mexican. That's nicknames. very Mexican. Yeah. It's like <laughs> La Flaca, but she ain't Flaca, right? So it's, like, it's all kinds of. It, so, uh, but you you YouTube page, go and make sure you subscribe. It. He's giving uh, behind the scenes boxing. It's not just him messing around. It's him giving you instruction on nutrition. Oh. It's a, that's, that's really, really cool. cool. So El Yu Yu's page, Roca Sports. What's happening? How are you doing? Uh, I know Virgil Ortiz was watching us right now. Who, Virgil was putting on a show on Instagram Live earlier. Right, I saw him on his guitar. Yeah. Exactly. Tonyo Diaz, the great Tonyo Diaz, Indio Boys and Girls Club of Boxing. Of course, a legendary I, fighter himself. I was going to bring him up. He is one of those guys that loved to fight in the heat because he lived in the heat. So he'd yeah. be right at home here. You know, 118 in Coachella, that's, yeah. that's winter. Exactly. Uh, Albert was asking, how hot is it in here right now? I, 111 inside the warehouse, but there are these big industrial fans everywhere, so it actually feels like 105 maybe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, so there's these, it's uh, it, it's cool. We're just happy with the fact that there's boxing going on right now. Beth Adran, the editor-in-chief of Ring Magazine, Doug Fisher. This one's scheduled for six to Acosta and Munoz. Costa found out on Monday that his original opponent uh, had been changed. Uh, his original opponent uh, rolled his car, luckily walked away from that accident, and they were just trying to find somebody to take the fight. Esteban Munoz, Henry was telling me, took it. That's why he weighs 143. They right. found a different weight yeah. for it. But he has the bone, he has the body of a, of a, a junior welterweight, yeah. definitely. Neither guy looks like a welterweight, although Acosta does have the, the frame to carry 147 pounds. This be a good test to see for El Yu Yu. From Whittier, California. This is the most aggressive I've seen Acosta. Yeah, it really I like that. Is. Not used to seeing him press an opponent against the ropes and, and letting body head combinations go. And it's a bit of a risk because I think he knows that Munoz has the power. And Munoz is a pretty decent counter puncher, too. In fact, I think that's that's what Munoz does. He wants to counter you. Lorraine Gonzalez, what's happening? Manny G, saludos. Also, if you guys 
are hardcore fans. If you're watching this, you are. You gotta follow my guy, Hawk1717, on, uh, on Twitter. H O C K 1717. His account says, I live tweet club shows around the world, and he really does. He will give you a link to whatever fight you want. Tim Bulk Sale, he is awesome. He's a great follow. He will scream you a fight from China one minute, really? then Uzbekistan the next. That's fascinating. I've been watching yeah. the fights at Papa's and Beer in Mexico. Oh, yeah. His streams. Right. I watched the uh, fight yesterday in are those Are those outdoors? Yeah, they are. You, can, you see like an ocean behind yeah. them or whatever? Yeah. So, uh, it's Hawk H O C K one seven one seven. Doug, you will love this account because it. he streams follow. everything. You want a Romanian heavyweight? He got you. Oh, George Acosta, Estela Munoz in the red. A good fight here. This one only going for six. Yeah, Acosta's taking chances, and he's he's, he's frequently taking the fight to Munoz, but it's it's risky because Munoz is looks to be a very a crisp, smart counterpuncher, and there's power behind those shots of his. But right now, I, I think just Acosta's just being too busy for Munoz. Charles Huerta checking in, mate, with boxing. What's up, Charlie Charles? in the house. Charles in charge. Yeah. Charles. Maywood, Maywood Boxing Club, the house that Charlie built. Yeah. <laughs> also, haircut by RC, just like me. That's right. I saw your barber yesterday. And you see me reading your comments, but if you want to see them on the screen, on Twitter, use the hashtag 321boxing. We have somebody uh, dedicated to the just monitoring the Twitter today. So 321boxing, uh, we will get your tweets on the screen. We will check that out. And there you see, that's the warehouse. We are on top. You see the stucco right behind there. We're not yep. kidding for you. Mr. Ken Thompson, Alice Campanova, really doing a good job just saying, let's just get fights out there for our guys. Well, they've done a good job with just the setup, the the in um, warehouse production value, the lights and everything. I mean, I'm, I, it looks like a nightclub, so I can imagine people think it, that it's nice and air-conditioned in here. Yeah, it, it does look really cool. <laughs> but it, yeah, it looks great. And uh, we are practicing um, social distancing between myself and Doug and Paul our uh, Swiss Army knife here. There is plexiglass between us, uh, California Commission here, making sure everything's taken care of. Uh, Leti Ariola, what's happening? Leti, I need another bottle of tequila. It's 111 in the warehouse. Uh, Miguel Amaro, saludos. This is our co feature. Good. Munoz, Henry Ramirez was telling me, uh, started boxing at the age of 18, said he watched Pacquiao Margarito. Wow. And, Ten years ago. And, yeah, he was 15. He's like, oh, that's what boxing is. Like, this is cool. Mm -hmm. So at the age of 18, he played soccer in high school, started going to gyms in San Bernardino just to learn about it. Couldn't really find anybody. And then was, oh, as he eats a big right hand from yeah. Costa. But he comes right back with a right to the body. And I, I think that might be a key from you know is to is to attack the body now easier said than done against a tall rangy opponent he stays on the outside but if he can time the if he, you know he looks like he's a good counter puncher if he can time some of those head shots from acosta with a body shot he might find something so munoz was looking for a gym in riverside couldn't find it and he pulls up to henry ramirez's gym he said he sees him. He's like, hey, that's the guy from TV. Yeah. <laughs> Henry's famous. Yeah. And so he and Henry's like, yeah, if you want to come work out here, no problem. So for six months, he'd go to the gym and just work out. Henry paid him no attention because, right. hey, how dedicated are you really? Yeah. Put him in to spar one day against Ryan Garcia. Ryan was coming up two years ago, and he was still an amateur. And he said he held his own. He's like, okay, maybe this kid really does have wow. something. Started working a little bit more with him. Here he is now at 2-0. Oh. He has two KOs. So he took this fight on Monday, and here he is. Yeah, I'll, you know, I'll say this. Listen, he's, I've, I've got him losing the first two rounds, yeah. okay? Um, he's just being outworked. He's being beat to the punch um, by Acosta. However, I am impressed with his, his poise and how relaxed he is for a guy with just two professional bouts who only had you know, 30 or 31 amateur fights and for taking a fight just on days of notice. And could have just said, no, I don't want to fight this guy. He has right. fights experience. I know him. I've seen him. 
Right, and he's fighting a guy with 10 pro fights, yep. exactly. Uh, you know, nine and one. Lukey Boxing, Lucas Cattell, saying you do is very sharp. Lukey, you do a great job in Northern California on the boxing scene. Love your interviews, because I use them for research a lot, believe it or not. Costa went to Cal High in Whittier, class of 2014. Typical teenager, baseball, basketball, soccer, heck, even karate. Turned pro in 2017. Yeah, very sharp technique from George. Brandon Stubbs, what's up, Brandon Stubbs? We missed you, I, and I, I mean that sincerely. Like, I, we missed the interaction with the fans. Doug and I work with different promoters, and when you're doing those broadcasts, it's straight to the point here. We interact with you, we have fun with you, and it becomes like a little community, and it's pretty cool. We missed you guys, believe me. We've been sitting in the garage for too long. <laughs> Steve Kim is back. Hurricanes must be on commercial break or something. Yeah, we're not doing well. Steve Kim does a great job at ESPN now. Uh, he started with us back in the day. Now uh, he's on ESPN doing a great job yes. for him. Doug, Steve, Steve's like a one-man show over there. Doug, uh, you're the editor-in-chief of Ring Magazine. I'm going to bring this up right now during, between the rounds. Yeah. Your Pacquiao special, how do people get that? Um, well, if you're a subscriber, you will get it. Okay. Uh, so if you if you subscribe to the Ring, it's it's a special issue, but you, you get it along with your subscription. Um, you can go to ringtv.com okay. and click on Shop. Or you can just go to ringmagshop.com. You can buy it from the e-store. Gotcha. Yeah. And it'll be on sale in about two and a half weeks. Man, because the cover screen, if you don't have not uh, go and check out Doug's uh, Twitter account or go to Ring TV. Uh, it's a beautiful painting. Beautiful. By, by the great Richard Sloan. I thought I was like, yeah. Sloan art. I've always admired him from a distance. Then he followed me a couple weeks ago. And I'm like, oh, oh nice, cool, nice. man. Like, He's a good guy. Yeah, beautiful artwork. So just go check out ringtv.com. Uh, you can see that great feature that the magazine put out on Manny Pacquiao. Right now, we're watching George Acosta, El Yuyu, with the blue trunks. Uh, he's in control of this fight against Esteban Munoz, who's 2-0. and He took the fight this week. Love the moxie for Munoz, but you see the difference in the background between Acosta and Munoz. Yeah, you definitely can tell that uh, Acosta has the, the experience. He had 60 amateur bouts, um, compiled a 50-10 and 10 record, so mm -hmm. he was pretty good. Um, very good technique, everything off the jab. And uh, in this fight, a little more a little more active, a little more aggressive than we're used to seeing from him. And that, and that, that was a good career adjustment for Acosta. And now we're going to need to see a fight adjustment from, you, from you, I'm sorry, Munoz. Sorry, my lips are dry. <laughs> we get a these, beer, Doug. We, we've got these fans on. No, the get a, from, there's a cooler right sweating. next to us. Yeah. Get a beer, Doug. It's right next to me. Get the beer. <laughs> I, I'm gonna, I have a cold Modelo going right now. I know you like the Guinness. But uh, we don't have that for you right now. I'm going to grab a Gatorade right now. Uh, get a beer, bro. <laughs> Everybody else is drinking with us. Get one. All right. All right we'll we'll save the go. beer for the main there event. There we go. Yeah. I'll and, get it out. And seriously, what are you guys drinking right now? As we are watching George Acosta and Esteban Munoz. Halfway through the fourth round, scheduled for six. 3-2-1 boxing. This round brought to you by Thompson Building Materials in Orange. Now, in our previous fight, we had a southpaw with a lot of success by going to the body with his straight left. And we're seeing Acosta spear Munoz to his body with a, a late, uh, uh, a straight jab. He's used that punch very effectively in this round. Marquise Johns, Gatorade weak sauce, Doug. And <laughs> it's a red Gatorade. It is. It is a red Gatorade. I deserve that. Oh, when it is hot in Doug, here, man. He Doug grabbed the Bud Light. That's sweet. Yes. Uh, right there, you guys have any Modelo Micheladas? Marquise Bourbon and Coke? Okay, you're oh, a man. Yeah. <laughs> Old school. I like that. I'm, uh, I'm having a Modelo right now. We'll get there. Patricia bought it with tequila. There you go. Modelo, fool. Of course, I like what I see from him. It's Munoz on the corner trying to counter. You know, it's it's great to see young talent develop. And that's a great thing about Thompson Boxing and their relationship with local trainers like Danny Zamora and Henry Ramirez and Manny Robles. And they, they get these fighters who weren't blue chip prospects, right? Mm -hmm. They weren't, you know, national class or international class amateurs, but you see these guys learn as their career progresses, and I'm, I'm seeing a lot of nice wrinkles uh, to Acosta's game. Uh, and I'm learning about a new kid in, in Munoz. Yeah, I would like to see what Munoz will look like when he has a time for a fight. Right. Because he has the attitude, he has the moxie to say, you know what, I'll jump on it, no problem. 
uh, Michael Shepard is drinking a Zima, a man after Steve Kim's heart. <laughs> there you Zima, go. really? <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, to put, each their own, man. Uh, <laughs> somebody's drinking electrolytes. That means you have electrolyte. So somebody had a good Saturday night. Elvis Arroyo, David Tostado. And make sure you guys share the Facebook stream. I know it's working on YouTube now. Marco Ibarro, saludos a Marcos. And you see the corner of El Yuyu Acosta. Started boxing at the Youth Academy Boxing in Whittier. I mean, he's sparred with. Mauricio Herrera back in the day, John Molina Jr., Neno, Lee Shelby. So yeah, he's gotten work. That's really good experience. Doug, uh, Michael Shepard asks, best prospect in the Thompson stable? I think it's Ace. I think it's Ruben Torres. Okay. Yeah. So he's, uh, he's a lightweight who I think could easily fight at, at 140 pounds because of his size and his power. But his last fight against a, a, a seasoned veteran, I forgot the guy's name. Was it Oscar Bravo? Yes. Yeah. A bull, a real rough fighter, kind of like that guy that uh, Jamel Herring was in with last night, Jonathan Okendo. Okendo, yeah. I could be a Billy Goat, a guy who likes to rough you up, and I, I thought uh, Torres just handled it. He was so poised and so relaxed and, and so accurate with his power punching, and it was combinations. I just, I, I see a really, really bright future for Ace. Aline Rueda, what's happening? You're watching. Also, Tracy Martinez, strong photographer in the Central Valley. You need some work, hit her up. Also in the Central Valley, Albert Baker. Got to need to work together. Fifth round. Here. Now this is what Acosta, we've seen the boxing from him. Can he step on the gas now, Doug? Right, can he, can he change gears? Started a little fast for him, for his usual boxing style. Can he step it up a notch? And I think a step in doing that is to get you know, us against the ropes and to rake his body. Nacho Zunica says Dutch over still in the mix in that prospect. I don't think well, Dutch over is a prospect. Yeah, I don't think of him as a prospect. Yeah, he's he's once you're once you're on Showbox, <laughs> once you're in a, a Showbox co-main or main yeah. event, you know you're like a fringe contender. Yeah, once I stop announcing your fights, you've moved on, bro. You've either retired or you moved on somewhere else. <laughs> I know my role. I know my role. <laughs> Steve came with green, but obviously Lucha prospect. Yeah. Dutch over, you know, Steve told me that's the guy you want to watch when I first started doing these, working these Thompson boxing streams. And he was absolutely right. And the great thing is he's so much better than when I first saw him. I mean, he was, he was impressive the, the first time I saw him, but he gets better with each outing. But obviously Dutch over is somebody you want to keep an eye on. He's definitely, he's there. He's there in the lightweight division. Um, I, I, I consider him one of the dark horses of that division. He just needs the right fight to, to really shine, and then people will start talking about him. And you hear the corner of Munoz telling him, let it go. It's, I think they can sense that, hey, we're far behind. But your nickname is Stone Hands. You're going to sit down on low, right? You'll be willing to eat one if you can land one. Yeah, he's, he's showing me that he's, he's relaxed in that ring. He's got the right temperament for a fighter, but he's not active enough, at least in this fight. Um, it's, he's a, a counter puncher, and um, one shot at a time isn't going to get it done against Acosta. He's going to need to put shots together, these combinations, and, and a little bit busier with that jab. And he has a jab. That's the good news. He's got one. George Acosta looking good through five. El Yuyu controlling this fight. The co-feature on 321 Boxing from Corona, California. Red Omega Products International. Oh, there you see it coming in. Big Surge Estrada working the cuts tonight. Andrew Rodriguez working the other side. That's Saul Bustos. He is really tall. Manny Robles. We see the tweets coming through. Make sure you use the hashtag 321boxing. There he is. Louis Lopez has a strong following. He went to high school. Three minutes away, Corona Centennial, right wow. down the street. So if there wasn't a pandemic, this would be a packed place right oh now. Oh my park goodness, yeah. it's a pack no matter what. Yeah. And final round. Sixth and final round. That's going to be a good one. The next one, the main event, Louis Lopez, Saul Bustos. Legend Boxing checking in. Sarah Lopez, let's go. Angel Mendez has them. Sixth and final round. Appreciate all the comments. Keep it coming. Main event is next. 
Got the rant, Doug Fisher, Jessica Rosales, in Corona, California. I tell him again, just let your hands go. Francisco Lopez, you sent the Galindo checking in. We appreciate you watching. Your Laker game's about to start in a couple minutes. PBC's on, so wherever you're at, thanks for the support. Costa, I like what I see tonight, Doug. Yeah, definitely an improvement from some of his uh, previous outings. He does look a little tired in this, uh, this sixth and final round, but it is extremely hot in here. It's extremely hot in here. And he's been working. He's been letting his hands go round after round. Um, and I really think if you know this is going to make anything happen in this final round, he's actually got he's got to get on the inside and stay on the inside. He's got to roll those dice. Vicky Arredondo in Sinaloa. Adelina Alvarez, Arvin, California. Manny G, checking in. He's waiting for Louis Lopez next. Man, some of these comments in Spanish. Damn, se enojan en español. Make sure you guys follow Dougie Fisher, his Twitter account. You still doing the mailbag, Doug? I still am. Heck yeah, you are. 20 years now. <laughs> <laughs> Every Monday and Friday. That's what you call. I'll be working on it tonight. Yeah. That's what you call people a setup. <laughs> Make sure. Punch it straight a little bit low. Less than a minute to go in the co-feature. A solid night of work for George Acosta, El Yuyu. Good outing though from Esteban Munoz, stepping up in experience without a doubt. This is, yeah, and, and this is something that he can uh, take a look at with Henry Ramirez and they can and work on adding what he didn't do in the ring tonight, you know, head movement a little bit, you know, uh, working the jab more, bending a little more, you know, he's a, he's a bit straight up, yep. you know, so, and, and he's able to twist and roll with some punches, but um, he got hit a little bit too much. And it's also his third profile, he's going six rounds. Right. So it's a little bit different. For yeah, I mean, uh, fighting a six rounder is, is advanced for somebody in, in just his third pro bout. Yep. Even if they had, you know, 100 amateur fights. And during a pandemic and on a few days' notice. Exactly. Good outing, though, tonight for George Acosta. If he controlled this fight against Esteban Munoz, they go the distance. They hug between. Sportsmanship between the two. Interesting, though. For those of you who did keep score, how did you have it? Any rounds for Munoz? Let us know. Then after this, the main event, Luis Lopez, Saul Bustos. Marco Ibarra in Phoenix, Arizona. And you hear, you hear uh, the corners, Acosta telling Henry, hey, thank you for taking the fight short notice. Exactly. Because if, if he didn't did, step up, they don't have a fight. They don't. You're right. Y saludos a la gente de Los Mochis, Sinaloa. We'll come back. We'll have the decision from Omega Products International in Corona, California. You're watching 3 2 Unboxing. Paving the way to your personal sanctuary that you simply can't stop thinking about. Find yours at bellguard.com.
Founded in 1974, Semco is recognized as one of the largest manufacturers of steel framing and metal lath systems in the United States. Semco has built its reputation on the finest in quality material using only mill certified prime steel. With over 60 state-of-the-art roll formers, Semco is able to handle any small and large construction projects. Semco distributes our products throughout the United States, Canada, Mexico, and the Pacific Rim. Over the past 40 plus years, Semco has expanded from a single location to four strategically placed state-of-the-art manufacturing facilities throughout the western, central, and southern United States. Call us and let Semco show you how we can make your project better today and tomorrow. After going all six rounds here at the Omega Products International Event Center, we go to the scorecard. Judge Jose Escobian scores about 59 to 55. Judges Raul Caiz Jr. and Ron Stevens turn in identical scorecards of 60 to 54. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. El Yuyu, George Acosta. And congratulations to El Yuyu. George Acosta picks up his 10th victory of his young career. I like what he saw, Doug. Yeah, it's, listen, um, the last time I saw him on a, a Thompson Boxing stream, he was losing to Ace Torres, and I was underwhelmed. Um, I wanted more effort. Um, I saw that, that there was, um, that he had uh, potential, um, and tonight it, it looks like he's living up to that potential, and he, he's, he's, he's putting forth an entertaining style to go along with his, his technique and his ring tactics, and that's what a young fighter needs going forward. Our next fight will be Louis Lopez taking on Saul Bustos, uh, but before we get to that, you're going to have hear from George Acosta, as you is going to do an interview with Jessica Rosales, and also... We can't go straight to the next fight because we have to clean the ring, California State Athletic Commission, and the crew, they're wearing all white hazmat suits, will be coming into the ring to clear it. So if you have a, right now, if you want to go make a little uh, run to the fridge, do that, but don't go anywhere. Share the Facebook page with us, uh, not with us, with your friends, let them know what's going on. Our main event is coming up on 3, 2, 1 Boxing. So right now, let's see Acosta's getting there. He's at the mic, socially distant from Jessica Rosales, who's standing by. All right, guys, joining us now, we've got George Acosta, El Yuyu, who improves his record to 10-1 and one tonight with that unanimous decision win. First and foremost, it seems like the action never stopped for you in the ring there. It's 111 degrees inside this warehouse where Is you it? got all affected by the heat. Uh, you know what? Um, no, because... During training, during training camp, we were sparring and, and the gyms were just as hot, you know. But I think, uh, well, maybe not as hot, but I think the adrenaline of the fight, you know, you can't really, you don't feel the heat, you know. You're, you're worried about punches getting thrown at you and everything, so you're, you're, you're not even focused on the heat, you yeah. know. I thought it would affect me, but I, I guess it didn't. Yeah, and speaking of that adrenaline, we did notice that you came out a little more aggressive, a little bit faster than what you usually do. Right. Is that because of the adrenaline, or is there kind of a change in plan now for you? Uh, no, well, definitely a change of plan because I've noticed uh, that I, I'm, I, I start slow. You know, I'm a, I'm a slow starter. I'm not afraid of saying it. You know, on, on, on camera and everything, it's the truth. But it's something we've been working on a lot during this training camp. It's just it's, it's starting fat fast and expecting the opponent to come out really strong. So that was the game plan going into this fight, being a little bit more aggressive off the bat and expecting a, a firefight from the first round. Yeah, obviously you got the outcome that you were looking right. for with that new approach, but how do you feel with that new approach? Uh, no, you know what, I, I feel good. Uh, definitely feel good. Uh, it, it, there was a lot of mixed emotions leading up to this fight. You know, uh, I went through uh, I went through like four or five opponents. Right. You know, I wasn't preparing for 144 pounds. I was, my initial opponent was 133, so, you know, I was, I was getting ready for a 133 pound fight, and then it got changed to 134, 137, 38, and then finally 144. Kind so, of all over the place. Then. Yeah, so uh, I, I'm not used to fighting at, at a higher weight class, I'm used to, you know, 135. Um, so, uh, I mean, as far as the outcome, that's what we wanted, we wanted to, we wanted to win. Uh, as far as performance wise, uh, there's a lot of improvement, I just got to go back and, and look at the fight. Yeah. Yeah, and of course, and speaking on the opponent that you did have tonight, he actually, we found out on Monday that you were going to be getting a new opponent. So he kind of just came in last week on a win for this fight. But 
Tell me about him. He's got that nickname, Hands of Stone. Did you feel the power in his punches? They were saying that, you know, it sounded like it. Uh, you know what? Uh, he, he, he definitely did have power, um, but uh, I, I didn't, I didn't feel, I, I didn't feel like, I didn't get dazed if, that, if that's what, uh, if that's what you're asking. I didn't feel like I got dazed at all during this fight. Uh, I did get, I did get hit. He landed a good uppercut, I think. He landed a good body shot. Uh, he had power. There was a thud, but I didn't feel like it affected me. All right. And so, what's going to be next for you? Uh, you know what? I'm gonna take a little break because I've been training since, I've been training since March. You know. Uh, well, since my last fight in yeah. the, the middle of February, so I've been training and I've been, you know, on and uh, on and off of like, oh, you're gonna fight? Wait, you're not gonna fight? You're gonna fight? You're not gonna fight? So you know what? I'm just gonna take take a little time off, a week or two, uh, and then get back in the gym and then uh, talk to my management and see what's next. All right, I'm gonna ask you the same question. So what's next for you and your YouTube channel? Because we know that you've been <laughs> doing some YouTube videos. You've been trying to influence the masses. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm actually. Leading up to this fight, the last couple of days, uh, I've been documenting everything, you know, oh, cool. all the COVID tests, uh, backstage, uh, all the testing, everything that I'm doing in the in the, in the the hotel room, being in the boxing bubble leading up yeah. to a fight. So I'm going to show that on my, my next YouTube video. Hopefully I drop it tomorrow or uh, the next coming days. And uh, yeah, just just on my channel, I'm, I'm, I just want to educate people. You know, I want to give people... Um, People that are not not involved in, in boxing but want to know about boxing, like life of a boxer, um, nutrition tips, exercise right. tips, uh, boxing tips. You know, amateurs looking to turn pro, or just just everything that has to do with boxing. I just want to give a, a boxer's first uh, first experience, first person experience. Right. Yeah. Point of view. Point of view. There you go. Yeah. There we go. All right. So the next video coming out soon. It's going to be behind the scenes of everything that happened here. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little disappointed. I know that me and Betho and Doug are not in this vlog. So you've got some explaining to do. Why are we not a part of it? We're not. You're not part of it. Yeah. What? Me, Betho, Doug. We want to be in the vlog. We want to be on the oh, show too. Yeah. Of course. Absolutely. I, I, would, I would. That would be awesome. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Yes. You know, uh, having a having an interview with the interviewer. Right? Yeah, Something I like, like that. that. Yeah. All right, I just right. snaggled my way onto your YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, we'll awesome. talk about that later. We'll talk business. Beto's actually my manager, so okay. I'll have my people call your people, right. and we'll figure it out. Awesome. All right, congratulations Thanks on so the win tonight. Of course, everybody that's watching right now, hang tight. We're going to take a quick break right now to listen to a word from our sponsors, and then we'll be right back to some more action right here. Experience Makita's cordless outdoor power equipment. The mower is a part of the world's largest battery system and cuts non-stop for up to two miles. The self-propelled model makes mowing effortless. Get unstoppable power without the hassles of gas. Reach speeds of up to 116 miles per hour with the single battery blower. One system, endless possibilities. Now get two extra free batteries. Ladies and gentlemen, during times of hardship, we at Thompson Boxing Promotions would like to send out a message of love and understanding. We are all in this together.
Sometimes in our lives We all have pain We all have sorrow But if we are wise We know that there's Always tomorrow Lean on me When you're not strong And I'll be your friend I'll help you carry on For it won't be long Till I'm gonna need Somebody to lean on Please swallow your pride if I have things you need to borrow For no one can fill those of your needs That you won't let show Just call on me brother when you need a friend we all need somebody to lean on i just might have a problem that you understand we all need somebody to lean on lean on me when you're and I'll be your friend I'll help you carry on For it won't be long Till I'm gonna need Somebody to lean on You just call on me brother When you need a friend We all need somebody to lean on I just might have a problem that you'd understand We all need somebody to lean on to bear that you can't carry I'm right up the road I'll share your load if you just call me call me if you need a friend How does it feel to be main event against Luis Lopez? It feels like it's a blessing in disguise because I've been praying to God, you know, I've been praying to God for this opportunity and now it's here. It was tough preparing for this fight because I had to recover from coronavirus, but now that I'm fully recovered, I'm, I'm ready to put on a show for you guys. What I know about Luis Lopez is that he's an undefeated, hungry fighter just like myself. Not only that, but he's a real aggressive fighter and he's fighting in his hometown, so he's also here to put on a show. My prediction for this fight is for me to win unanimous decision and if the opportunity comes to get the knockout victory, I'm going all in for it.
know, the main event tonight feels pretty exciting. Uh, it's my first main event, so I'm excited to show everybody what I'm really made of. I've been preparing for Saul Bustos for, honestly, I could say since I've been younger. I mean, I've always fought taller guys, bigger guys than me, so it's nothing new to me. Um, I've just been sparring a lot, just stepping inside and finding my fight, do what I got to do to get in there and win. Uh, with all this COVID right now, I mean, it, it does suck that no fans can be here. This is my third time fighting in Corona. I mean, I've won every single time, so I'm going to take that, take that into consideration and do what I got to do to get the W. Uh, this is going to be a good, close fight. I don't want to make it too close, but it's, it's going to be a barn burner for sure. We're going to be in there. We're gonna, it's going to go some rounds, so I want to see what he got. Entering the ring. Out of the red corner, Saul, El Chicano Bustos. Saul, El Chicano Bustos. You're like, I think I've heard that name before. Didn't he used to be called the Avatar? Yeah, he was early on in his career from South El Monte, California. Same gym as an amateur as Jojo Diaz and Arnold Barbosa. Here he is now, 12 0 1, 7 KOs. Now training with Manny Robles. We get some good work with those fighters in Manny Stable. Manny, one of the best trainers in boxing. He's the B-side tonight. The B-side, but he's one of those guys that's been on my radar for a while just from seeing him at the gym. Mm-hmm. All right, he's, he's fought everybody. He's yes. In the blue corner, Louis Lopez. Louis Lopez, Corona, California, grew up right down the street. Or as everybody in the family calls him, a buddy. Uh, his Instagram is B underscore Lopez 2422. 24 and 22 being his high school football numbers. Played for the Huskies. Uh, excellent pro football program in Southern California. Here he is as a boxer. Main event tonight. Normally a Lopez fight means 200 people have bought tickets. Uh, but tonight, pandemic. No crowd, so they're all on Facebook. And we see you and all you Lopez fans. Better share on Facebook. Let it go. So everybody's calling him buddy. I found out today because I was being a fool and I was tagging Louis Lopez. It turned out it was his dad. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Lupe Contreras, always smooth. We continue the Omega Products International Event Center, Corona, California. This is boxing. Well, actually, 321 Boxing, proudly presented to you by... Thompson Boxing Promotions and being sponsored by Thompson Building Materials, transforming spaces into beautiful places. Omega Products International, the leading stucco manufacturer in the U.S. Henry Fortifiber, moisture system control, easy as one, two, three. And Makita, rule the outdoors. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare to be entertained. This is the main event of the evening. Set for eight rounds in the welterweight division. Our judges scoring at ringside are Ron Stevens, Raul Guy Sr., and Jose Cobian. At the sound of the bell, the man in charge of the action referee, Raul Guy Jr. And now, two undefeated fighters enter the ring, but one of them is going to take an L tonight. Introducing first, the fighter standing in the red corner, wearing white with red trim. He weighed in at an official 146 and three-quarter pounds. In 13 pro bouts, he maintains an undefeated record of 12 victories with one bout even. Seven of those victories coming by way of KO. Fighting out of South El Monte, California. Saul El Chicano Busto. Across the ring in the blue corner. Wearing silver with blue and red trim, he weighed in at an identical 146 and three-quarter pounds. And he enters the ring for the tenth time as a professional with an undefeated record of eight victories. One bout even, four of those victories coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Corona, California, Luis Lopez. Mouthpiece. All right, gentlemen, you receive the instructions in the dressing room. Know what I expect? A good, clean fight. Legal punches here for you. Legal punches here for you. Touch the gloves. Go to both of you. 
Raul Caiz Jr. working his first fight since the pandemic started. Third man in the ring. Let's look at the tail of the tape, Doug Fisher. Let's see how these welterweights, these young welterweights match up. Yeah, tail of the tape, there it is. All right, Lopez is the younger man at age 22, just younger by four years. Of course, Bustos has the height advantage and the reach advantage. And we are ready to go. We see all the comments on Facebook, but a special shout out to Newcastle, New South Wales. Give me, give me my names on Twitter. I told you I was going to shout you out. Thanks a lot for coming. So good fight so far in Thompson Boxing. First time, I'll definitely be back. It's a good one here, the main event. Undefeated, both fighters. Louis Lopez with more experience. He's got the blue trunks. Lopez across his belt. Aguilera boxing champions. Eddie Aguilera making those trunks for him. 8-0-1, four KOs. Lopez grew up playing football, was a linebacker in high school until realizing football, they want you to gain weight. Boxing, they want you to lose weight. And made that transition to full-time boxing. Trained with Henry Ramirez in Riverside. Stable of the Thompson Boxing Shows. We've seen him a lot. Saul Bustos, his last fight was on a Thompson show. Got the victory. He's 12-0-1, seven KOs. But the level of competition has been better for Louis Lopez as Busto started his career going down to Mexico. And, you know, when you go down to Mexico, you're there to get wins. Both guys are throwing some serious heat with a lot of accuracy. And as we mentioned this in the start of the show, Doug Fisher, this is a fight that normally, I think managers for both sides might have said, you know what, I like him, that's a good fight. Maybe Let's four wait. or five more fights. Yeah. But the pandemic Let's wait has changed until there's up. like an NABO or NABA, NABF belt. Or more money. Yeah, or just more money, right. Make it a 10-rounder on a network or something like that. Which is perfectly fine because these are two good prospects. Totally understandable. But the pandemic has changed everything in the sport of boxing, all boxing. And it's matchups like this where we really get to see what they have inside of them. It's one thing to watch them against an overmatched opponent. You can get a, a, a feel for what their style is like, but you don't know what their character is like. Wow. That was a huge hook landed by Bustos. And he was looking for it. As was Lopez. Lopez has been looking for the left hook himself. And with the main event, we'll read your comments between rounds, want to focus on this one. It's a good scrap. Louis Lopez, Saul Bustos. Very good matchup of styles because, oh, Lopez might have got uh, buzzed a little bit. Body work from Bustos in the white. And that's the voice of Manny Robles who's sitting right next to us. You'll hear him. Henry Ramirez on the other side of Lopez. Nice work from both fighters, but the choice punches have been landed by Bustos so far. 20 seconds left. If you're on Twitter, use it. Hashtag 321 Boxing. Get your tweets on the screen. Final seconds of the opening round. This round brought to you by Thompson Building Materials in San Diego. We're at Omega Products International, number one stucco company in the USA. Cover your house in Omega. That's right, Salcedo. Boost us to the max is his Instagram. Francisco Salazar. Hello, Annette Gomez is watching. Yadira Salcido, vamos primo, love for buddy. Joao the solo. You see the corner of Bustos, who's getting worked on by Big Surge Estrada. Claudia Magallanes is watching in Compton. This is our main event scheduled for eight. Let's go. Inside the warehouse. Who's still blessing himself as he comes out for the second round? Saludos, Sal Gonzalez, Louis Lopez, with his grandmother, Angela Ramirez, watching. And uh, last year, remember, uh, after Lopez's grandfather, Ramon Ramirez, passed away of cancer, Louis fought. Impressive victory. A 
big fan base for Louis Lopez. If you go to Thompson Boxing Twitter, you'll see they're having little watch parties for both, both fighters, Bustos and Ramirez. And because of the pandemic, the corners are smaller, so Henry Ramirez has Louis Lopez's dad in his corner. Manny Robles has no Estrellita in his corner. Edgar Yasso, who's normally second with him. Estrellita is watching at home. So a lot of changes in sport of boxing. Sal Sanchez, Thompson boxing fighter, is watching. He's training like he's going to have a fight pretty soon. True Boxing says Bustos looks good in the first. Yeah, he was... The, the first round on my very unofficial scorecard went to Bustos. He landed the power punches. It was very... It was fast-paced and it was intense. Not much of a feeling out process. Both no. of these guys are serious. They're both dialed in. You can see both... Both welterweights have a very good boxing foundation. They've got their balance. They've got proper and, uh, glove placement. Good technique on all their punches and a lot of leverage on those shots as well. They're not playing around. No, they're not. We thank you for joining us here on 321 Boxing Sunday evening show for you. Free on Thompson's Facebook and YouTube page. Also, ThompsonBoxing.com. If you missed any of the earlier fights with Asuma Asensugi and Yu Yu Acosta victories, you can go to the Thompson YouTube page later on where there will be archived for you. But the rant, Doug Fisher, Jessica Rosales, Bustos, dig into the body. Good hook from Bustos. Yeah, Bustos' hook has been a weapon to both the body and the head. Um, he's won the war of feints as he walks in, in on Lopez. Lopez is also trying to make use of feints, but um, Bustos isn't falling for it. Bustos doing a little bit of a better job of blocking and countering, although Lopez does a good job of that as well. And that's the voice of Manny Robles, you can hear. So. Wow. Bustos just hooked off the jab. That is a veteran move. That's a hard move. Very hard to ha actually have leverage on that, that hook right after you pop the jab. Two rounds in the books. Where are you watching? Check in right now and make sure you share the Facebook page. We're in Corona, California. A good main event coming your way on 3, 2, 1, boxing. I'm right here. You can see the camera. This is how close we are. Plexiglass between us. See us. It's old Bustos. Up across the way is Louis Lopez with Henry Ramirez. See the... Bustos is stalking, got a left hook to the body, a right to the body, a right cross, followed by a hook to the head. Bustos staying on top of Lopez, and Lopez letting him walk in. Lopez was trying to, to block and counter off the ropes, but Lo, uh, Bustos does a good job of that while on the attack. Vanessa Ramirez watching in Santana, as the locals say. Valerie Castro is watching, driving to Arizona. Yadira Salcido, also in Santa Ana. And this uh, this little nugget is for my man, Hawk1717, the man who gives you all the streams. And Bustos, early on in his career, Doug, in 2016, fought at the famous Rancho Grande Bar in Tijuana, Mexico. On that card, Ryan Garcia, who was fighting for the fourth time. Okay. And Bustos also had a fight. At the Cheers Bar in Tijuana, Mexico. <laughs> and that was, you know, I just love the names that go down yeah. there. Respect everybody that does everything else down in, uh, in Mexico. But that's the reason I bring that up is because Busto said that he was going down to Mexico to learn how to box. He decided to turn pro after high school. He, much like Ruben Torres, boxes as a kid, got to high school, said, I just want to play football. I just want to be a teenager. Right. So he stopped boxing, graduates high school, and he's like, I'm going to school, but I'm not really doing anything. I'm, what am I going to do? He said, I want to turn pro. Went back to the gym for six months, and they said, well, you're too old to really do amateur stuff. Let's go down to Mexico, see what you're about. So he was wow. down in Mexico, 
And he said his That's amateur fights over. for about two years were in Mexico. He said fighting Louis Lopez Three, tonight is the biggest step over. up in competition for him. He said because okay. even when he would fight the Iron Shows in Arizona or the the, the right. club shows in Southern California, he's like those were opponents I knew I was gonna beat. Exactly. And nope. if you and if you see footage of those fights, you see his style. You see he's a dynamic boxer puncher, but you don't really really know the level of his talent until he stands and he, he gets in there with with a fellow prospect. And now you see he's stepped up. His his level of his of intensity. He's so focused, so dialed in. I've never seen him this on point. And he's really looking like a special prospect. But here comes Lopez. Lopez has got a lot of pride and heart. And Lopez is bleeding from the right nostril. Yeah, he's also got a mouse under his, uh, or I think it's like right on his right cheekbone. Miguel Becerra said, I'm going for Bustos because he's related to a friend of mine from Tijuana. Viva La Libia! Bustos is really showing me a lot. Yeah, as Bustos said, I was fighting guys that weren't hitting me back. So he, he was like, the sparring was better for me. Yep. But he said, that's what you got to go through because he didn't fight for four years in high school. Yeah, he had to get used to it. And we have a good one breaking out here. Yeah, Lopez is going to, he's going to, he's going to fire back. He's just not going to allow oh, no. a, an opponent to dominate him all round. Rosanna Hagen watching my nephew Louis Lopez from Rhode Island. Danny Zamora checking back in. Let it trainer for Dutch over and Ace yeah. Torres. Yeah, Busa was going to Rio Hondo Junior College. Three to three rounds. Busa is in charge. It's an entertaining fight, but he's not just outlanding Lopez without boxing. Way to stay calm and collected. Yes. Everybody's busy right now. <laughs> Here it is, my man. Tim Boxeo. Shows me the Rancho the Cheers bar. There it is. There it is. It looks like a palapa in somebody's backyard. Oh, you're a man after your own... You're a man after my heart. There, Tim Boxeo. I need to go to these little spots. Be like Richie and Bob in the Bama one day. That's going to be me and you, Doug. We're just going to go on the motorcycle and just figure out how we go. We're going to go Rancho Grande, Cheers Bar. Uh, what's the other one in TJ? Uh, Big Punch Arena? Yeah, maybe they can use some commentators. <laughs> I, you know what? You can do a commentary. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go get, have a guy with the tequila spinning me yeah. around with a whistle. <laughs> San Antonio checking in. Spanish shoot, Spanish shoot, working out those things. Up and down with those shots. Busa was also, I, I saw him at the gym that Manny's training in Southern California now, you know, South Kid actually. I didn't know anything about him, I went and talked to him. He said, I was like, you know, you're the B-side. He's like, am I? I'm like, yeah, you know what that means? He's like, no, not really. He's like, but I need to win because I don't have a promoter. I don't have a contract. I never know when I'm going to fight. This is my first time I'm a main event. It's also the first time I've seen my name on posters. Yeah. It's also the first time I've been interviewed. Wow. Yeah. Because the Thompson Boxing Crew of California and the guys went and watched him spar. They went and saw him do bags. And they're, you know, you got to do that. He had never done any of that. Louis Lopez, that's old hat for him. And Louis is in tough right now. Yeah. Lopez is giving it a good effort, but Bustos is doing a good job picking off those shots and blocking those punches and coming back with his own shots. He's stabbing the body with jabs and straight rights. Bringing down, lowering the guard of Lopez, and he comes over the top like he did with that right cross. And you see Doug's unofficial scorecard. And my man Jermaine. Big Jermaine out of Fabella Chavez Boxing Center, man. I miss you, Jermaine. Uh, trains, does a great job with the amateurs, has a couple of pros. Miss you seeing you at Scott Park in the morning, man. Soon we'll be chopping it up, Big Russo. Shout out to you. Watching. Yeah, that's so refreshing to hear from Bustos what he told you about this opportunity and the way he views it. Because he's absolutely right. There, it, there's one thing to have a buzz from the gyms. There's one thing to, to have an undefeated record. But if people don't see you in action live, they're not going to get excited about you. And it's like magic when 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 the boxing Twitter, boxing social media is tuned into a stream or a fight and a, a, a semi un, or sort of under the radar fighter shines. Yep. Like last night we had it with a, uh, a junior flyweight or flyweight, Bam uh, Rodriguez. Oh, Bam Rodriguez, yeah. Jesse Rodriguez. 
he got rid of a, a, a competent veteran in one round, and all of boxing Twitter was buzzing about yeah. this guy. Everybody instantly knows his name. Yeah, the hardcores are going to know, but it's the yeah. fans are like, oh, okay, I want to see more of him. Uh, Brandon Stubbs says, Busto's impressed me so far. Uh, I'm looking at my notes from Busto. He said, I need more punches. I, I need to become a boxer. I have to earn my stripes. He's doing that tonight. He is. He's delivering. And, in, and he's doing it against an opponent who's in there trying to win. He came in there as the favorite. He came in there feeling, you know, a lot of confidence. At, unofficially, I don't ever pick sides. I had Luis Lopez as the veteran because of the competition that he got uh, up against. I had him as my real slight favorite. All right, good fight so far. Yeah, Bam Rodriguez looked phenomenal. Mr. Honda doesn't sign just anybody. Thank you. <laughs> he does not just <laughs> right. sign anybody. Look at the replays, Doug. Lopez is trying to claw his way back into this fight. He dropped the first three rounds. He made the fourth round competitive with combination punches, stalking. He wasn't always landing, but he was letting his hands go. He did land to the body. From the Omega Products International Warehouse, one stucco company in the U.S. Cover your house in Omega. Beth Durant, Doug Fisher, Jessica Rosales, and the Thompson Boxing Crew. It's 3-2-1 boxing on this Sunday. I know there's a Laker game going on. I know there's PBC going on. I know there's a, a Dodger game coming up. We appreciate you checking in with us, just like our man Chris Milley, golden boy young fighter who trains with Avatar and Manny Robles. Francisco Salazar says, I can see Bustos up 40-36. That's fourth round for Lopez, that's, though. That's how I have it. Although I do think the fourth round was competitive. Yes, it was. And, and these final three rounds are going to be really interesting. Also, shout out to my man Frosty from Craft Beer Kings in El Monte. Grew up with Bustos. And also VP Racing in Long Beach. Check out that gas station. This round brought to you by Thompson Building Materials in Fontana. Edgar Salgado has this comment, Doug. Bustos looks gassed. Louis has to take the advantage. Yeah, uh, Bustos is, is feeling the heat. 110, 111 degrees in there. And, and don't forget, they're fighting under those lights. You know? Yes, that's another point. And he's, he's feeling the effects of uh, his punch output. And he's been letting his hands go, so... I agree, um, but I think Lopez has been stung a few times. He's taken some, some choice body shots. So. Right on and the left belt. the body was right on the belt line, yeah. So you better believe who he's That wasn't. So, you know, Lopez is dealing with his own adversity. They actually, I, I can see the effects of fatigue in both fighters. It's, and that's also, just to give you the background, we are in Corona. The fighters check in on Friday to the bubble where if you're not on weight, you're only allowed into the hotel gym for one hour. So you need to lose weight that final couple ounces. It's extremely difficult because you can't leave the hotel. So guys have had to lose weight in their room. So they, these two fighters had no problem making their weight, but it's a different way of doing it compared to how they're used to. Lopez is now looking for that left hook to the body from Bustos, and he's going to try to counter with a left hook of his own upstairs. Less than a minute to go in the fifth round. That's it. That's the body and over. Bustos sparred with, uh, correct me how I say his name, Sergey Bohachuk? Bohachuk? The guy, uh, Oh, Bohachuk. Yes, Bohachuk. Sergey Bohachuk, who is a monster, by the way. That, he, that was his main sparring partner for this. Oh, forget about it. So he's ready. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Boacek is a 17-0 is a junior middleweight who's won all of his fights by knockout. That's uh, Tom Loeffler's guy, right? Yes, he's uh, with uh, 360 uh, yes, promotions. Don't keep that cat waiting. There you go. I don't care where you shoot. From the head to the body to the chest. Boy, I would have liked to see some of those sparring sessions. He also spars with uh, world title contender Terrell Gaucher. That's, that's great experience. Yeah, you say sparring with Terrell, the Olympian who's... You know, lost to Lara, who's going to fight against Erickson Lubin pretty soon. Said, I learned the mental game of boxing. Didn't have that before. Because before he cooked up with Manny, he said he was going to another gym. He was always the big fish. Right. 
Now it's come to Manny, they're not paying attention to you. <laughs> it's get in there, do work. Yeah. Earn your attention. Buddy Lopez fans are wheeling him on. Lopez is trying. Yes. He's definitely making an effort, and he's he's made it a fight in rounds four and five. We'll see if he can muster something special in the final six minutes of this welterweight bout. Francisco Salazar, boxing scribe, says Lopez doesn't think he's down on the scorecards, going to six. He's got to go for broke. This round brought to you by Thompson Building Materials in Orange. Make sure you get all your landscape and barbecue island needs. Go to Thompson Building Materials, also in Sacramento, Ripon, San Diego, and Lomita. And the action hasn't stopped. From the opening bell, these two are just going to be going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And I expected good things from Bustos, but I didn't expect him to be as aggressive as he has been tonight. I expected... I expected oh him to God. mix some stick and move in there because mm -hmm. that's what I'd seen in the sparring sessions. He can get on the move, he can get on his bicycle, he can punch on the fly. Um, and, and that's what trainers like to see from a tall fighter who's also really rangy. But he's taken the fight right to Lopez and uh, it has proven to be the right tactic in this fight. As I think he's taken away some of that confidence that Lopez entered the ring with. One, two, one. Xavier Grosco, Lopez looks fatigued in the fifth. Bustos can stop him if he presses. Chris Mealy, Avatar's improvement is crazy. We did a lot of rounds together. He's looking solid. Sheesh. Boxers never give praise, really. They're like, oh, yeah, we did good work. We're not. <laughs> what up, Chris Mealy? I'm in Chicago. Looking forward to seeing you back in the ring. Jaime Ramirez watching Buddy Lopez in North Stunnington, Connecticut. And it is really hot in this warehouse. I'm looking at it. it's 108. Doug, you mentioned it. Underneath the lights. Under the lights, it's hotter. And they've been in the building for three hours because this is the main event. They do a bit of trying to get the fans for them, but when you're getting hit, it takes a toll. Phenol boxing, nothing fight. fight, supreme boxing and true boxing. Appreciate your support. You know, coming into this fight, Beto, I thought Lopez was the guy with the body attack, mm -hmm. and I, I looked at him as the combination puncher, but it's Bustos who's having the most success with body punches, and generally speaking, he, he only lets his hands go in bunches. He's dropping two, three, and four at a time. He's not, not like a single shot at a time, so impressive stuff from Bustos, and... Um, wrinkles to his game that I hadn't previously seen. Same with you. I would watch some of his fights on YouTube and I'm like, ah, he's fighting guys that are like, and it was, like I'm not an expert and I've been in the ring, but I've seen enough fights to know when guys are, th are throwing sloppy punches and guys are going down. I was like, right. okay, what is it? I was I was curious to see what Bustos was all about. Because yeah, we've seen many guys where have a record sure. and then you step up in a competition like Louis Lopez and they don't look good. Right, and um, He's getting exposed in a good way. He's getting exposed in a positive way. He's saying that um, his talent is real, and there's some real character behind it. Estrita is not going to work with you just because. That's right. Manny Lopez is not going to work with you just because. Same with Henry Ramirez. They're not going to take guys just because. As we head to the seventh round, appreciate you watching. Sunday evening. Labor Day weekend. What are you drinking? I got my Modelo. Doug has his Bud Light. I should have brought you your Guinness. Nah, it's, not, it's too hot for a Guinness, right? Mm -hmm. Guinness is like cold weather. Is it cold? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what do you drink when it when it's hot, Doug? Um, rum. Rum. <laughs> <laughs> with, lo with lots of ice. <laughs> On the rocks? Yeah. No way. Yeah, yeah. rum with uh, lots of ice and uh, ginger beer. Oh, rum with ginger beer? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, that's what you drank when you went to Yosemite? Uh, no, no. Okay. I drank a lot of water. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I saw Doug Fisher hiking and like adventures. I can't believe I saw Doug Fisher hiking. You were kayaking? Oh yeah, my god! Proud of that. <laughs> You're not. I've known you for a while, now, Doug. You're a mentor of mine in the sport of boxing. I never would have thought. No. Dougie the outdoorsman. I'm not. That's that was for the wife. That was for the wife and kids. Hey, you got to do it. Uh, Joe Martinez, Don Julio Silver, cold. Uh, 
Sisman Wojla says I'm drinking coffee 3 a.m. in Poland. <laughs> well, yeah. You're in Poland for Eastern real? European. Yeah. So what, what is it like? Three o'clock in the morning, maybe? Yeah. It is, or it's it's after midnight, right? Juan Salcedo, pool se cate rojo, Ray Fierro Corona. I like how they say Doug Fisher's unofficial scorecard. <laughs> Just so you know, I'm not official. <laughs> yeah. But hey, I've got Bustos winning every round. Um, I, I do think it. He is in a fight. I do think that rounds four, five, four and five were competitive. I thought that he uh, reassumed control in round six. Uh, and we'll see if Lopez can make something happen here in round seven. But he needs to make an adjustment. And it looks like, I mean, he's moving around a little bit. Maybe that's what, maybe, maybe Lopez needs to adopt the stick and move game. That's the voice of Manny Robles sitting right next to us in the red he's, corner. He's a vocal trainer. He stays on his fighter. Salvador Godino says, comment the damn fight. Look, bro, you must be watching it for the first time. Um, we're doing both. We can do both. Look, Sal, you're watching the fight. You see with your own eyes. We're here interacting with the fans, just like how we're talking to you right now. Uh, we want to interact with you. We appreciate all the fans going on. It's just go back and forth. And, you know, this is the third fight of the night. We appreciate you, Sal Godino, but it's a different broadcast, man. It's a club show. We just want to have fun with you guys. Uh, but I got no problem with you. You me, bro. Tell you what, this is a club show, but Bustos is showing beyond club level talent. Yeah. He, he's showing the form and talent and poise that you would expect from a blue chip prospect. You would expect this from somebody who was a national amateur champion. Joette Gonzalez checking in. Joette Gonzalez is going to fight Got a big fight coming up, next he? weekend on ESPN. He's fighting Miguel Mariaga. Good luck, Joette. Yeah, Joette. That's a real fight. Yeah, he's a Golden Boy fighter fighting on the top rank show. Good luck to you, Joette. And uh, say hello to Don Chuy, your father, and your brother, Jose. That's that's a hell of a matchup. Yeah. It's going to be a good fight. Joette, one of the good dudes in the sport of boxing, a professional all the way around. Also works as a judge for USA Boxing. Volunteer. Yeah, I'm really impressed by the combinations from Bustos. They're creative, they're accurate, they're fast and fluid. He's, he's good at, uh, at picking shots off, blocking shots, blocking and countering. We just saw with his left hook. Luis Lopez is a tough dude. I didn't expect Bustos to control the fight the way that he is. I thought it was going to be an all-out battle between these two. Yeah, I couldn't pick a winner. I thought it was a, a toss-up fight. Legit, on paper. But that's why they fight the fights, folks. Tony Luna, Big D Willison, Anthony Ortiz checking out. We, we head to the eighth and final round. Uh, Thompson Boxing will be having another show uh, in October. Don't know the actual date because, look, we ain't stupid. <laughs> NFL starts on Sundays, right? We're not going to put up a show on Sunday football. So we might be going back to Fridays. Uh, we'll see what's going on. And it'll be 3 to one The reason it's three fights uh, is because it's easier to control with the pandemic. Yeah. Also leave the uh, ring up in their ring. And also, it just moves the show around. It moves the, it show. Moves the show along. It's, it's, uh, I like it. I, I, it. As much as I love boxing, I don't like these four-and-a-half-hour, five-hour broadcasts. <laughs> yeah, it's especially when you're working them. Yeah. But it, it, <laughs> exactly. It's, it's also like, like those fights that they have in Eastern Europe, 18 fight cars. It's too much. Or the ones in Thailand. It's just too much. Good job, Aro Kaiz Jr. tonight. Uh, third man in the ring. Eighth and final round at Omega Products International in Corona, California. <laughs> I want to see how Bustos finishes. Bring it up, Sol. Bring it up. Tight, 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 Looks like tight, both men want to close the show. Yeah. Louis Fielding desperate. Beautiful. Right hands to the body from Bustos. And he needed those because Louis was really coming on. Double up on the gap. So I've, I had heard of Bustos, but there's a lot of guys we hear in Southern California where you're fighting which show? Okay. 
Look at Louie low combinations. Down. Yeah, Lopez loading up with the right hand. Oh, he got, yeah, Lopez got caught. Be careful. He got caught with the right himself, lost his footing. Oh, it's too bad because he had a moment yes, going. Yes, he did. That's some momentum. He needs to go, Lopez needs to go back down to the body because he landed uh, a nice right and left to Bustos' midsection. But when you're going for broke, Doug, that's the risk you take. That's right. But Bustos is answering the call because Bustos felt those heavy hands and he's firing right back. Lopez got froze and now he's having to regather, regroup. Fighters are tired. They took good shots in the round. Yeah, it's cliche, but they are emptying the tank. Yes, they both are. Of them. That's good effort for both. A minute to go in the fight. Their main event, Bustos and White. Louis Lopez in blue. Both fighters undefeated. As Lupe Contreras said, somebody's always got to go. It's been Bustos controlling. Let's go. Let's go. What are we waiting on? And here, Manny Robles. Manny Robles, what are we waiting on? Yeah, Lopez, I'm sorry, uh, Robles has stayed in Bustos' ear for the entire fight. Every minute of every round, he's telling him what to do, and Bustos uh, has responded. Bustos has no promoter. Has not fought as a main event. And I think he earned himself a different career tonight, Doug. I would sign him. <laughs> if I, if I had a promotional company, I'd sign this kid up. Because the last time he fought on Thompson, he fought, he won. I wasn't impressed. Right. Tonight, against Louis Lopez, a tough man, he looked impressive. It's, it's fights like these that let us know what a fighter really has. Yep. That's why they're so important. That's why I take my hat off to both teams for accepting this fight. Yeah, they accept it. They didn't have to. And you know what, Beto? It's been a fight, even though I have it a shutout for Bustos. Well, you got to earn it. I have it 80 to 72. Saul Bustos. For those of you at home, how did you score? Any rounds for Bustos? Or any I'm rounds for Lopez? For Lopez yeah, that's the question. If Doug's unofficial card, shutout. Maybe, maybe the fourth round, maybe the fifth round. I tell you what, I liked what I saw from Lopez in a losing effort because he had effort. He was stung in the first round. He was um, tagged really hard to the body throughout this fight. He was in against a taller, rangier fighter who elected to plant his feet and let his hands go. So he was dealing with a volume puncher, and he fought back. He made it interesting. He provided professional resistance. Professional resistance. Who would have thought that from the guy who's undefeated? Saludos, Brandon Valdez! Nuestro amigo de Colombia, Marquise Johns, a fun scrap. Marquise had the PBC on TV, Thompson on the laptop. We appreciate you. We'll come back. We'll get the results of the main event. 3-2-1 boxing in Corona. Discover the advantages of the Henry FortiFiber 123 Moisture Control System. It's as simple as one, two, three. Choose the weather barrier, add the flashing, then finish up with the Henry Moist Top Sealant. Done. No guessing, no gambling. Just the winning confidence you get from our compatible systems.
Experience the world's largest compatible cordless system. Makita's LXT batteries take you from power tools to outdoor power equipment. The blower delivers power comparable to a 24cc gas model. From the job site to your home, reach speeds of 116 miles per hour. Use Makita's cordless products anytime, anywhere. One system, endless possibilities. Now get two extra free batteries. Ladies and gentlemen, after going all eight rounds here at the Omega Products International Event Center, we consult the official scorecard to determine a winner. Judges Stevens and Cobian scored about identically at 80 to 72. And Judge Geis Sr. scores at 79 to 73. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Still undefeated, El Chicano. Saul Busto. Shows up with no contract, B-side, and he turned to us and told you, I told you I was hungry. Saul Bustos gets the victory, unanimous decision. Don't go anywhere. He's going to get interviewed by Jessica Rosales after he takes the pictures with Raul Caiz Jr. It's different, no crowd, nobody cheering, but you see the emotion on the face of Bustos, Doug. Yeah, Bustos didn't need the crowd. He had his own motivation. He has that fire in his belly, and he showed that. I, I guess he told you. Yes, he, was he did. Hungry. Well, he showed it. That's what it's all about. Prove it. And I told him, don't come talk to me. I was like, don't come talk to me because you're going to go do an interview with Jessica Rosales. So just save save the commentary for her, bro. We will take care of all that. It's like, So thanks a lot to everybody who checked in on Facebook. Uh, where am I looking at right here? There's a camera. Where? Where? I don't see no camera. Oh, the one up there? Well, oh, there's plexiglass in front of me, Paul. Like, there's like legit plexiglass. Doug, we're looking right up there. Oh. All right. Daniel Robles, how you doing? Congratulations, hey. sir. We'll see you there. Uh, we go, your, guys Congratulations. Doing, your guys doing the interview over there, yeah. sir. Get along. As you can tell, I still got the towel. And we weren't see? kidding. I got the beer. Oh, like, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Doug, good job on the broadcast. Cheers over here. Cheers. There we go. Good job on the broadcast. Well done. We are not done. Uh, you will see uh, Saul Bustos' interview with Jessica Rosales. They're walking over there right now. Uh, as always, appreciate everything you guys did for us and watching us and supporting us on 321 Boxing. Right now, I want to say that thank you to everybody on the crew. Jeanette Gonzalez, Alice Capanova, of course, Mr. Ken Thompson, Joe Pahar, Paul Fornia, everybody behind the scenes, the camera crew, the audio, everybody. I want to make sure you say thank you to them before we get to the interview. Is he ready? Is uh, El Chicano or the Avatar, so old Bustos ready? Let's go to Jessica Rosales. All right, like things are a little unfair. It looks like you guys are having a bit more fun over there than I am over here. Coach Manny is taking my interview right now, but we'll have him in just a bit. So here's a little fun fact for you guys. We were talking about how this is kind of his first time getting this kind of attention before the fight, doing the interviews and Ready. all that. He just told me that he has been practicing for his first post-fight interview. This is that moment right now, so no pressure or anything, all right? No but don't at all. mess this up, okay? Yes. It's been a great night for you so far, and what a fight out there. You said that Louis was gonna be a step up in competition for you. How do you think you did against him? I gave myself like a C plus, maybe B minus. I was expecting, I was going in there to, to finish him within like the fifth, sixth round, but I wasn't able to. So that's something I need to work on. All right, so if that was a C-plus performance for you, what needed to be done to make it an A? I feel like I need to improve on my my training a little more, my conditioning. I thought my conditioning was there, but I, I guess with this test and, uh, that, I just, I, that I just went through proves I need to step it a little further more. Yeah, and you know, as soon as you stepped in the ring from that very first bell, it seems like you stepped on the gas and didn't really let up until about the fifth, sixth round, kind of slowed down a bit there. What was going on? Kind of getting tired or just kind of purposely slowing it down? Uh, both, both. I got a little tired, so I decided to bust it in a little take a round off, you know, to get, get myself together for, for the finishing rounds because I knew he wasn't going anywhere. He was tough. He was taking those body shots like a champ. All right, and of course, what can you tell me about your competitor tonight being in there with Louis Lopez? How I was you? expecting him to be a little more aggressive, but uh, he wasn't that aggressive. I think he got a little more aggressive probably in the third or fourth round. After that, he slowed down a bit. Yeah, and I think for you, it was about making a statement tonight. What do you think you said with that performance? I showed that I'm for real, that I really want this, that I, this sport is for me, and that I really want to achieve, achieve greatness and become a world champ one day. 
Yeah, and I think one of the things that you also did is I think you made a lot of the fans watching tonight excited to see your next fight and excited to see what you're going to be doing. So what's the plan? What's next for you? Uh, that's up to my management and my trainer. I'm, uh, I'm going to go back to the gym. I'm going I'm to take about a week off, you know, get the little bruises off my, off my body and then jump right in it. All right, well, we're going to have a talk with your trainer in a little bit. I'm going to tell him no more chats before the interview. you got to stay ready at all times. All right, so anything you want to say to all those new fans that you may have acquired tonight? Yeah, shout out to uh, South Damani, the 6 to 6 area, and shout out to my daughter, Anandi. I love you. I'll see you soon. All right, there you guys have it. So Gusto stays undefeated tonight with that unanimous decision win. Betho and Doug, we'll send it back to you guys over there where you're having all kinds of fun. Thank you. Oh, you want us to talk now? You want us to talk right now? Really? We do. We've been talking all night, all night long. Beto Durand, Doug Fisher, Jessica Rosales. Good job with the interview with the winner, Sal Bustos. Doug, I was impressed with him even more than I thought I was going to be. Yeah. He dominated that fight tonight. Yeah. I, you know, I'd, I'd heard good things about him. I'd seen good things from him. I was expecting him to maybe stand his ground um, in spots, but utilize that height and that long yeah. reach punch on the fly stick and move that's the kind of matchup i thought i thought it was going to be a dynamic boxer puncher mover in bustos against a stalker with with a good body attack and combination punching but it was bustos yeah. with the body attack and the combination punching and he stayed sharp from round one all the way through round eight the reason we love club shows because you see guys who have nothing on their side their careers can change. I think we saw that tonight with Sal Bustos. And it's special, you know, and, and it's a it's a feather in all of our caps. It's 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 really it's the fighter who does it. Yeah. Just like like Bustos told you, I told you I was hungry. Yeah. It his but hunger. Then they all tell us they're hungry. I know, but yeah. he meant it because yeah. he proved it. And right. He showed it. So like his hunger, his willingness to take a risky fight. Okay, and then and then really show up and and yeah. give his best when it counts, not just in the gym because. There's a lot of guys who look great in the gym, not so good under these lights, yep. especially under this, this kind of heat. He did that, and because of that, and because of this platform, because of Thompson Boxing, because of this stream, which was free, people are going to be talking about Saul Bustos, who have never uttered his name. Exactly, and we'll see Saul Bustos made a good showing for himself tonight. Louis Lopez comes up short, but still, a good, good effort. effort from Louis Lopez. I want to see him. A, a I want to see him back. Tough dude. Victories for El Yuyo Costa and also El Cuete Japonesito. Uh, Akitsugi. Uh, we Akitsugi, saw him. yeah. Akitsugi. That's a name. I'll remember that yeah, one. That's, that's a, a new one. one for me. And without a doubt, thank you so much for watching on Facebook. I know we had the YouTube problems for the first fight. We got it fixed. Thank you for your support. Make sure you share. And as always, you can go back and check out the Thompson Boxing YouTube page for archive of fights where you can see guys like a Josito, a guy like Tim Bradley way back in the day because next you know you they're moving on to bigger uh, fights so for everybody involved with the crew and without a doubt our sponsors Henry Scaffolding Makita for Alex Campanovo and Mr. Ken Thompson my partner Doug Fisher Jessica Rosales did a great job with the interviews I'm Beto Duran thank you for watching 321 Boxing good night from Omega Products International in Corona California you've been watching Thompson Boxing <laughs>